Hey there, how's it going, JP? Looks like y'all are doing fantastic. That's awesome. I'm doing really well also. Had a great trading day today. Hopefully a lot of y'all, I know a lot of y'all in the room had a great trading day today. So, and last night. Awesome days. Good days. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, sweet. My name is Daryl Martin with ApexInvesting.com. And this is a, another webinar in Be the Sniper or Be the Target. And of course, it's your choice as a trader, whether you want to be the sniper or the target. And you got to make it because if you don't make it, you're going to be the target. And if you're new to Apex or you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, we have a 30-day free trial where you can hop in, check out our trade room, our training, and our trading tools and learn our exact systems. Just go to apexinvesting.com forward slash bootcamp and sign up. Once you sign up, then you'll log into the homepage, scroll on down, and click here to access bootcamp, and then there is a training. Watch the training in order, okay? Don't try to go straight to the elite room or you're going to be lost, okay? So make sure to watch the training in order, okay? It's built in order on purpose. Uh, as with any financial presentation, I have to give a risk disclosure. There's risk involved in trading. Know what you're doing before you're doing it, etc. And have fun with that. All right. So what are we covering today? We're going to go into transitioning from demo to live. So how many traders do I have tonight that have either recently went to live or are about to go to live or want to go to live? Anybody in the room here or has everybody been in live for like two years? About to go, recently did, about to, about to, about to. Been in it one month. About to go live this week, live for a week. Live on the MNQ, going live next week. About to, got my account funded. Just did, been live for three months. There you go, sweet. So quite a few of y'all, and that's just you know a handful of the answers I read off. So a lot of y'all are at that point where you wanna to go to live, where you're about to go to live, or you just did go to live. We're gonna talk about all the little things that go with that that nobody else tells you, right? and um, help you avoid some mistakes. How does that sound? Would you like to learn a lot of the mistakes that traders make when they go to live and how to avoid them that you may even be making now if you're already in live? And those mistakes cost you money. So who here likes to not lose money for mistakes they could avoid? All right, so that's gonna be the first part of our topic. And then we're gonna do some sniper review. We're gonna go through and just look at the last you know couple days here and check out a few of the trades, okay? And like what we went over this morning, some trades that happened last night, and uh, just a couple common mistakes that I've seen. You know, not a long chart review, but one to get some details down. Um, another thing that we're gonna do is, you know, on Thursday, and again, if you want this link, uh, we'll put it up there in the thing for you, but under section two, we post all the webinars. So who would like to really master the enhanced trades? If you've been in the room, you've heard us talk about the enhanced trades. Would you like a little more guidance on those, simplifying them? The enhanced trades are your higher, like, you know, 85, 95 percentile winning trades. And we're gonna make them really, really simple. A lot of traders, that's literally all they take with us is they just take the enhanced trades, okay? Um, and then what I was thinking was maybe next week we could do a trade on, or some training on what we call the naked X boxes, okay, trapped Xs. And I could sort of maybe lay it out over a few webinars on divergence and on OD divergence and DR divergence and trend divergence, you know, and, you know, just trend trading and range bound trading, like doing like a breakup of the, the naked X boxes, just are sort of advanced in the sense of you got to learn to read a little bit more. Would you all appreciate that? That way you can actually learn how to take some of those additional trades with confidence. Would that be a good subject for next week? Or maybe in the next two weeks. So, you know, we keep it simple with the enhanced trades because you don't have to worry about levels and all that stuff. It makes life just, except for stacks. But 
I also want to teach you how to take all those other trades you see on the screen. Okay? So I was thinking about uh, doing that for next week's webinars. Okay? And if you have other webinar ideas, always feel free to let me know inside the room. And I will be glad to, um, you know, jot those ideas down. We put them in here. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, just all the little things you need to know to really take those enhanced trades with confidence. So make sure, if you haven't already, to register for that webinar right now. Again, all the webinar registrations are posted. I'll post the other ones up um, tomorrow or Thursday. But go ahead and register for the one for next week on the Enhanced Trades High Probability Wins. And I'll be actually updating. That video is going to update both videos <coughs> Pardon me. that are right here. Um, as we simplify, go back. And I, I like to remake trainings and make them better and better and better. So as I get feedback from you, you know, I always want to improve them. So we'll be covering trailing stops. We cover that in the room um, some, and then um, we will cover it a lot at the live event, and then we'll do some follow-up to that after the live event. But right now I can tell you, if you just focus on making 10 ticks three times a day, that turns into a six-figure income. So don't think all the money is in the trail, okay? Again, don't think all the money is in the trail and stop. Got the heater on over here. All right. So one thing I wanted to go over with you was, you know, spreading the word. Um, one thing we try to do at, keep, at Apex is keep the cost low. I mean, we offer free 30 days and, um, we try to not, you know, have like these ten and twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar packages, ten thousand dollar package to get started, you know, things like that. And the way that you can help us with that is by and help yourself is finding a friend or relative that understands what you're doing and learning with you. Do you think that might help you? A lot of you have already been referring people, like, you know, friends, sons, daughters, brothers, trying to get your wife to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so definitely spread the word. You know, post on Facebook, things like that. Make sure you join our Facebook group. John, if you can post the Facebook group out to everybody. Um, you get first ac first access to content. And people, I don't know if y'all know, but people are posting like a problem they have all around. I, I follow Facebook more than anything. I, I think everybody does. And so they may post a problem they have or a question they have about a trade or even some ideas they have. And you're missing out on that conversation if you're not in it. So... Make sure to definitely do that. Like our Facebook page. Uh, we ask you to you know, share our post and follow us on Twitter and share on there. Post your experiences in the forum. Also, you can post feedback in the forum. All of these things together enter you into a contest. And we do a contest every month where we do a random drawing and we give away a free membership. Okay, for, you know, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's a year, sometimes it's a lifetime membership. And so I want to go ahead and announce we're going to give away a free month to somebody who is actually on the free trial right now. We've had people that have been on monthly trials, annual, all sorts of stuff. But somebody who's on the free trial right now, um, Danny Crumpler, you have won the contest for hopping in and being engaged in social media with Apex Investing and helping spread the word. So again, I want to say thank you very much, Danny Crumpler. And we've already added the 30 additional days of access to your account. So congratulations. Um, again, if y'all want to be in on that, we do that at least once a month where we give away, like I said, it, it can vary. Sometimes it's a course and I'm thinking next month about actually giving away free access to one of our mastery courses. So, um, you know, the more posts you like and share, not just in the group, but publicly on the page, the more entries you get inside of the, uh, the contest. So that helps keep our costs low. And, of course, it's something that I hope you're sharing because you believe in it and you see it working for you. And, um, you know, we like to say thank you, and that's a way that we can say thank you. Um, if you're not in the room, you're missing out. Um, I just talked to a trader tonight that's like, I'm like, why aren't y'all in the room? Why are y'all hopping in Skype and talking? And they're like, well, the room's only open during the day. I trade at night. And I'm like, no, the room is open around the clock. So did y'all know the room was open basically 24 hours a day or, you know, from Sunday until like Friday close? Sometimes it's even open on Saturday. Did y'all know the room was open around the clock like that? 
Or did anybody not know? Let's put it that way. Did anybody not know the room was open around the clock? Because I know those few of you. All right, so you can always hop inside the elite trade room. And the trade room, I mean, it can make you, like, the trade room is what you make it, right? The more chatty you get, the more you are watching markets, especially if it's slow. It really helps to have multiple people in the room because you can have people really paying attention to different markets. Like, at night, you could look at New Zealand dollar, 6N, or, you know, the dollar yen, 6J, or 6B, the pound dollar, GC gold, CE oil. You can look at other markets and you can team up, okay? And you want to be in the Skype rooms, but you want to use the Skype rooms as your review rooms where you're posting your charts. I did this trade. Was this right? I did this trade. Was this wrong? You know, what could I have done better here? Or somebody asked a question. I don't know how to do this, you know? So you want to use the Skype mentor rooms that we give you all free access to once you're in the dollar trial and beyond that. You want to take advantage of that and ask questions because there are mentors in every group that will help you out and if you know the answer you want to answer the questions um one of the things that i want to point out is you know i trade i've been trading for a while i trade and i do very well and um i was actually thinking about this this week one of the things that makes me a good trader is talking to y'all so much not just teaching but just discussing you know, when I'm like talking through trades and things like that, just talking it out loud and saying it out loud. Okay, well, there is a trapped Xbox here. Yeah, it's within two ticks. And it has a paw and it's right by a magnet. And just saying that stuff out loud over and over again helps me. Do you think it might help you if you were to say that stuff over and over again inside of your Skype rooms, inside the trade room? Would that help you to be interactive and engaged and talk that out? I mean, I can tell you, like, why do y'all say you want to trade like I trade, right? Is that a true statement? <coughs> so, if you want to trade like I trade, do what I do. You know, success leaves traces. Follow the traces of those steps. The steps that I take are I constantly am verbalizing trades, talking about trades. So if you see a trade, verbalize it. And if you're wrong... Wouldn't you rather somebody say you're wrong before you even get in the trade? There you go. Trade better than me. I'm all for it. You know? But don't be shy. Know a lot of y'all are a little bit more shy. Don't be shy. Like, shy is expensive. You know, KO's like trading on the floor with the team makes you better. You know, made him better. So, uh, so if you're not in the room, any time of day or night, you're missing out. All right? Now, of course... Me and Lori are in the rooms in the morning calling out trades. Now, sometimes I pop in and I surprise y'all in the evening, right? So I'll be in there and I'll call some trades out in the evening sometimes. Um, when I happen to be on that night, like tonight I was in there a little bit. Last night I was in there a little bit. So it just depends upon the night what I have going on. But, you know, we're in there in the morning on a consistent basis from about 9.30 to about noon. I think I was in there today till like 3 or 4. So, and sometimes even when I'm not in there, I'm watching. Even if I'm not talking, I'm watching. And you'll notice I'll comment if you've been in the room. If you're not using the form, you're missing out. We have a whole section under system dedicated to Sniper. And you want to take advantage of all the knowledge and the questions and the answers that are posted on there. How many people have visited the form? Anybody? <laughs> how many people don't even know where to go on the forum looks like everybody's been in it a lot okay so just in case you don't know go to forum.apexinvesting.com and then you'll log in in the top right if you're not already logged in and there's a you can do this and why you should when you post there that gets you another entry into the drawing by the way Okay, so when you have a day and you're rocking it and you're doing well and you're following the rules, you know, post there. Get you another entry uh, for a free giveaway. But then down here under system, we have this whole section dedicated to the sniper. It's like right under S10. And you can go in and you can mark stuff up and put all sorts of things in there. So 
don't feel like just because you're not in the room or maybe your Skype room's a little quiet that night or whatever, you have a question, don't let it get lost. Post it in the form. I check those, I'd say at least three or four times a week. Most of the time I check them every day, but I'd say every question that's posted in there gets answered. So yeah, if your work schedule doesn't let you be in there, you can still be in the room, whatever your work schedule is, but also you can still use the form no matter what your work schedule is, All right? So take advantage of the form. The form, I mean, it's you post it there, you sit back, you wait for somebody else to reply. It's pretty simple. And then you, other people can learn from those replies. Um, again, use the Facebook group, okay? So make sure everybody is using our Facebook group because, again, I post videos up there first. I'll post comments in there. Today I posted, or last night, I posted about um, the outbreak in China that took place of the coronavirus and said, hey, there's, you know, 200 infected, there's 15 medical personnel infected, there's like four or five dead. It's spreading throughout Asia. We had our first case of it go out this morning here in the U.S. in Seattle. So, you know, stuff like that, that might be helpful to know that because that's causing the market to move. You know, obviously it's never a good thing when things like that happen, but as market participants, we're there to trade the market movement, you know, whether that be up or down or whatever, right? So just to be aware of those things and know that that's happening. Um, so have you mastered the process in demo? Who feels like they've mastered the process already in their demo account of trading, at least the enhanced trades? How many do we have of you out there? So we got some that have, we got some not quite yet. So I got it really, really close. Demo's been good, I'm getting there. I'm not quite ready for prime time, a little bit, nope. <laughs> um, I'm close, I have and I have not. So let's see here. Not enough on enhanced trades, but we'll get that Thursday, right? So I'm not claiming that one yet. When the market is slow, I got it. When it's fast, it's hard. Still learning, but trading some on MNQ. Good for you. I feel I've mastered the enhanced really well. I've defined and mastered them. I'm working on it. I'm about halfway there. Okay, so that meant everybody, right? We had everybody from nope to I've mastered it. I want you to understand you're not alone whatever stage you're in. There are other people who have mastered it, other people that are working on it, other people that are working on getting to live. Do you think it may be important to master the process before you start putting real money down? Hey, John, can you get that question by Danny? Yeah, I mean, experience is not a kind teacher. It is the worst teacher in trading when it comes to a live account. So get down, you know, like if your trade can trades and they're not on reversal bars and you're trade taking a setup too, you don't have it down yet, okay? Get it down, master that process. Um, do you hesitate or do you know the entry management rules backwards and forwards? I think we just sort of covered that. What about the hesitation part? How many here are still struggling with hesitation? You see it, but you don't want to lose. Don't put it on. All right, so I'm going to give you, this isn't even a sales pitch. I'm just telling you right now, go to apexinvesting.com. If you can put this link in there for him, John, forward slash mind mastery. So it's seven sessions I did on trading psychology. The longer you trade, the more you'll realize that trading is about 70% psychology. Okay? Because no matter how good your system is, do you think you can mess it up psychologically? You can not take the winning trades and take the losing trades and, you know, jump in too late and not take your stops when you should? No matter how good the system is, right? Chasing the trades. <clears throat> so do you think you might even want to master that psychology a little bit? Yeah, the head game is, I mean, it is is—it is massive. And a lot of people who are newer to trading don't realize it. Uh, 
You know, some do, but a lot don't. And I literally have a whole seven course series and I give you a whole training right there. There's one video inside of the uh, mastering setup two section. There's another video and these are just highlights uh, where I trade, but it's a very good training. Like a couple people said it was one of the best trainings I've ever done. So would definitely suggest that you watch the videos, the, the mastery, the psychology one inside of mastering setup two and the psychology one at apexinvesting.com forward slash mind mastery and then you can make your mind up from there whether or not you think it would be worth it for you to you know do it i mean it literally takes like a couple bad trades to pay for it because you messed it up mentally so it's not just about going from fake money to real money it's a or in some ways it is because the mental game that can go with that all right um one of the tips i gave one of our traders today and I actually uh, did this last year during the live event when I was doing this Mind Mastery course. I gave everybody a casino chip. And um, I'm thinking about even doing it again this year. We'll see. But um, you should have something in your hand or something in, in front of you that you see that before every trade, you ask yourself, how will I feel if I make this trade? Am I gambling or am I playing probabilities? <laughs> if I chase this trade, am I gambling that it's going to keep going even further? If I place this trade, am I taking a trade that really I know doesn't have high probability, but I just am impatient and I want to trade? How will I feel if I place this trade? And if I gamble, that's always fun to win, but what if it's not fun to lose? I'm okay with losing a trade. I have no problem with losing a trade. I hate losing a trade when I'm the one that lost the trade because I placed the bad trade. And it's so easy to think that trading is gambling. And it's not. You can place possibilities, which are gambling, or probabilities, which are putting the edges significantly in your favor. And it's a really bad feeling when you gamble and lose. And what happens is when you gamble and win, you go to highs, you gamble and lose, you go to woes, and you like chastise yourself. But what you really need to do is go just... Am I gambling or am I placing the probabilities? And if I'm going to place the probabilities, then I need to be confident and place them. Otherwise, I'm going to miss out on the good ones and I'm going to take the bad ones. Or I'm going to be mad that I missed the good one and then I'm just going to randomly take another one. Okay? So get something in your hand. It could be a poker chip you buy from Walmart or something, but something that you have that you're sort of playing with in your left hand while you're moving your mouse around with your right hand if you're right-handed. But where you ask yourself that before every trade comes up, if you're nervous about taking the trade i'm going to play the probabilities and let it work out or i'm not going to play the possibilities and gamble do you think something as simple as that could help you out i mean it's simple but do you think that actually can make an impact on your trading if you ask yourself that question before every trade Like eight of you do. There's like 200 of you on here. So I guess people have said I've taped it to my event. I've taped it to my PC. Yes, yes, it would help. Yes, I'm already doing it. It has helped. So people have taken the course and actually got the chip whenever we were at the live event. So if you will do that constantly, it will help you become a lot better. Okay, a credit card statement from your last cruise. There you go. Put that up there from all the gambling chips, right? <laughs> go to Vegas and get your cash in and cash out receipt. Put that up. There you go. <laughs> Best response. So do you think maybe you should be profitable in demo before you go to live? Or do you think, well, now I'm just waiting to get my account funded and now I'm going to start learning and I'm going to start trading live. Yeah, wait till you're profitable in demo. So next thing, and Josh, JP just said it, treat demo like live. Yeah, be profitable and be consistent. Exactly. So you need to master demo before you master live. 
So some people, you know, I've set a rule before that it's. I think it's good to trade 20 days consistently profitable in demo before you go live. I mean, you don't, I'm not saying you have to go that long, but I think that's a good rule. And if you mess up and you break your rules, you start your 20 days again. So if on day 19, you decide to take some possibility trades, win or lose, you got to start your 20 days over again. You think if you put yourself a punishment on yourself like that, that you might actually even treat demo more like live? If you're like, I am not going to allow myself, I'm going to fund my account. And this, by the way, is a big difference. I want you to fund your account. I want it right in front of you. I want you to know the money is sitting there waiting on you. But you're not allowed to trade live until you can consistently trade possibility trades profitably. And if you mess up, you got to wait 20 more days. That's a harsh punishment, isn't it? Yeah, pop, <laughs> probability trades. You know, some of our best traders, you know what they do if they mess up and they take a possibility trade? They stop trading for the day. They won't let themselves trade at all for the rest of the day. And that's when they go live. They're like, if I mess up and take a possibility trade, I take the rest of the day off. That's Craig does that. It's like, if I'm going to be stupid, I'm not going to allow myself to trade. And I'm just not going to be able to make anything, but I know I'm going to at least not going to lose anything more. Do you think enforcing some rules like that you're on demo and I'm talking about demo to live, right? So in demo, enforcing that rule, I mean, maybe you don't do 20 days. Maybe you do 10, okay? I'm just trying to say, like, make it where you have to do something. You know, I don't care if it's a week, but I have to trade a week without taking any possibilities and only taking probabilities Win or lose on the possibilities doesn't matter. And if I mess up on that, I got to wait another week to go live. Could you at least do that? I mean, I'd like you to wait a month, but could you at least say if I don't do it for a week, I got to start over for five more days? Like, is that realistic? And do you think that would make you treat demo a little more like live? Because that's the goal here. Is to have, like, there has to be a consequence. Because in live, you have a consequence, right? Like, you lose money. But you have to have a consequence or there's no, you know, punishment. There's no punishment, you're going to reward bad behavior. Right? So, somebody brings up about limiting contract size. Yes, you want to trade the same number of contracts as you would in live. You can't just pile on and everything else to try to make it work. So whatever, like, that's why I said I want you to open your account and fund it now. A lot of y'all have not yet funded your account, right? Are there some of you that haven't funded your account yet because you're waiting to get to the point where you can trade live, where you're confident to trade live, so you haven't funded it yet? Like you're waiting, like, I want to get this down. Once I get it down, then I'll fund an account. Any more of you? I see a few. Any of you like waited on funding your account? All right, so I'm going to challenge you to go ahead and fund your account. I'm not challenging you to trade it. I'm challenging you to fund it. Take the step to make it real and quit waiting. You don't need to be consistent to fund an account. You need to be consistent to trade an account. And that funded account is going to be calling it your name. It makes it where it's real. You're not just playing a video game. Now, you can trade demo the exact same way as you can before you fund an account. You can still trade that SIM 101 account even with a live funded account. So all you got to do is go over and on the chart or the DOM, whichever, right here and you can grab the account you want to trade okay but fund your account and make it real make it where it's a goal make it where if i can trade probability trades consistently for a week i actually get to start making money and then you're not also waiting for a week to fund your because sometimes it can take a week or two to fund your account and that's frustrating once you're ready 
Has anybody went through that frustration of it taking one or two or three weeks to get an account funded? Because they wanted this piece of paperwork and that piece of paperwork and all that stuff. I mean, sometimes it goes like right through. You know, Ed's like, yeah, two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Okay, so do you want to be ready to fund? Do you want to be ready to trade, but have to wait three more weeks to trade because you didn't get your account funded? Like seriously, those of you who haven't funded yet, do you want to wait three weeks after you're ready to fund to put to fund, or, or do you want to, when you're ready, be able to trade? So go ahead and get it funded. Make it real. I don't care if you fund it with just four hundred bucks, the minimum balance requirement. Okay, you can fund it with more. Funding it again is real easy. Just go do a quick wire transfer. So, Richard's like, if I can give anybody advice, please go ahead and fund it. <laughs> okay? And I'm, cuz I'm talking about like now there's some emotion. You're like there's money out there and I can trade it. And we we're trying to add all the emotional impact we can before you go live. By the way, I've also seen people saying, now that I've funded my account live, I'm going to hop in the room and I'm going to hop in the Skype room and be active. Do you think you should wait and tell the real money is on the line before you really start learning and getting interactive inside the room? Or do you think maybe you should be in the room and active while you're in demo? So from day one, be active, active, active. I cannot stress how active you should be. You know, one of the things I said at the beginning of this webinar, why do you think I'm as good as I am as I am right now? It's not only because I've been doing it for a long time, but it's because I talk out my trades. I'm constantly talking to you all about trades. The more you talk about your trades in the rooms, whether it be the elite room or the Skype rooms, the better you're going to become and the faster you're going to become better. I do it every single day. Do you? Do you think you'd be better if you did? Do you think you're going to start being good at talking about your trades when it's real money on the line? Or do you think you might want to get that habit down before it becomes real money? Yeah, before. Definitely before. Okay? So these are things you normally hear on a webinar, right? Like this is a little bit different. But I want to give you some just real practical advice on helping you out. Now, there can be a big mental effect when you start trading real live money. Who agrees with that? Why do you think that is? Fear of loss. It's real now. Stress of losing. Cardiac events. Limited funds. Consequences. Wow. Didn't we just talk about all that stuff a second ago? In demo? If you make mistakes, you got to wait another week. And lot, if you don't have the discipline to do that, you're not going to have the discipline to walk away when you're making mistakes live, right? You got to give yourself consequences in demo so that way you're mentally prepared for consequences in live. Now, what do you think another reason is? This is probably one of the top reasons that it has a big mental effect. Who could guess what the top reason is going from demo to live has a big mental effect beyond it being real money? What's your guesses? Here in fear of loss, margin call, stress, pride, fear of losing, ego, seeing red, fear, overthinking it, dreams can become real or not. Knowing you still have a lot to learn. I still have a lot to learn, Richard. Emotional trading. You haven't learned how to handle the emotions. 
Let me ask you this question. If you're only risking a penny a tick, wife saying I told you so. <laughs> if you're only risking a penny a tick, would that emotion really be coming to light? But man, I lost 30 cents today. And I'm asking everybody to answer this question. If you're only losing a penny a tick, got to be more real? No sweat. No, no. Come on, everybody. Like, if you're only losing a penny a tick, May as well be demo, no big deal, no big deal. Pennies would be better. Easier to refund pennies than it is to refund 10 grand. So overall, it doesn't affect people. The one answer I got is, oh, I hate to lose. Well, get over that. <laughs> Sorry, but you're a trader and it's not about winning or losing, it's about trading well. Hate to lose because you took a gamble, not because you took a good trade that lost. Peyton Manning said, if we lose a game, I don't want it to be because of me. Meaning he works and works and works and works and works and works to try to not make it because of him. It doesn't mean he's not going to make mistakes, but he tries to do everything he can to avoid those mistakes. A bad trade is not a losing trade. A bad trade is a gambling trade that wins or loses. So the risk reward ratio will only hurt you if the win loss ratio is not in line. Okay, so all of y'all pretty much just said that a penny wouldn't matter. As I raise that number up, higher and higher, it's going to start to matter to you. Is that right? So is it possible, based upon the answers y'all just gave, that the real mental effect is really about how much you're risking of your account. And that some of you should maybe be trading micros instead of minis. Because you have $1,500 in there. And you're risking $100 a trade. So is it really the fact that it's live or is it the fact that it's the amount of money you're risking compared to the size of your account? Now I have a rule that I've taught for a long time and I understand you have to fake it until you make it, okay? A lot. But the ideal rule, now this doesn't have to be money in your account. It could be money outside of your account as well that you've withdrawn. The ideal rule is 5% divided by 6. Okay? You take your account size, 5% of that divided by 6 is the ideal psychological level that I have found. That's the formula that I came up with. That I have found psychologically allows you to take the next trade without blinking twice. Basically, they come down to you risking $100 in a $12,000 account. If you had 12 grand in your account, would losing 100 bucks be that big of a deal? It's sort of like that penny compared to the thousand you have in there right now. Because it's not to me. $100, I can lose $100 and take another trade without even blinking. So I do want to challenge some of you to consider micros. Okay? 
Doesn't have to mean you have to do one. Maybe you're doing two. Maybe you're doing four. Maybe you're doing six. Okay? But losing 100 bucks when you have 1000 bucks in your account is a 10% loss on a single trade. Yeah, that's going to jack you up because now you're worried about what happens if I do it again and again. Now what am I going to do? So the real challenge of demo to live is really more about your risk capital compared to your account size than it is about the fact that you're trading live. And, you know, you won't make as much trading with micros. But you can learn to be consistent and then you can work to get some more money to deposit in there to get the account bigger. Your data fees don't go up or down with micros. The platform doesn't go up or down with micros. Your subscription doesn't go up or down with micros. Just your commissions sort of go up with micros. Peter says, from small acorns, mighty oaks grow. I started with three grand. As a trader. Back in... I don't know, early 2000s, mid 2000s. I don't know what it was, but a long time ago, way too long ago. And I mean, yeah, 15 bucks a day turns into 450 bucks a month, right? So you're going to trade two micros, that's 450 a month, and that more than covers all your fees and puts money in your pocket. Now, it may take you a few more months to get to where you want to be able to trade those minis. But you're doing it the right way. And if this isn't the, the raw, raw, you're going to be a billionaire message in five weeks, okay, or five days. This is the, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years? Do you want to be a six-figure income trader? Because blowing your account because you're trying to get there too fast with too little, risking too much... Is not the path. I know everybody's like, well, that sucks because I just want to hear that I'm going to make it and make a lot of money. <laughs> and we, we do do well. And I've seen traders with very small accounts rock it. But just understand that when you go in with a smaller account, and I'm not saying you can't go in with like three or $4,000, okay? But... Your mental capital is going to be decreased because your stress is going to be increased. And you do have a higher chance of blowing your account. Now, that's almost like a rite of passage for most traders is to blow a couple accounts. But I'd much rather do it with a small account or small ticks than I would with large ticks. I remember when I was when I first traded Forex. I mean, like literally I just started. The first day I made $10,000. First day, I thought I was all that in a bag of chips, right? The second day, I lost $10,000. <laughs> I decided to not trade Forex for a long time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad that did not happen in the reverse order. Exactly. Somebody ate my chips. <laughs> But that's the big mental effect. It's your account size. And I'm not telling you you have to go have a big account. And I'm not even saying you have to have a big account to start on minis. Okay? Like a huge account or anything like that. I'm just saying if you're not aware of the stress that is caused by having a smaller account, you can't handle it. You can't deal with it. And you'll be down two trades and you'll stop and you'll give up when you could have actually still been net profitable that day. Does that make sense? I'm not... I remember reading these books where they're like, unless you have like $50,000 in your account, you have no business trading. And I'm like, screw you, you know. I'm going to do it anyway. And I did. But I was aware that I little had a little, you know, probability going against me because I was trading with a smaller account. So it can totally be done. Just, you got to be aware of it. Okay? Does that sound fair? Like not telling you you have to have like 12 or 15 or 100 grand in there, but you got to be aware of your risk and okay with it. 
so you don't freak out when you take a losing trade and then miss out on the next three winning trades? So I think we just discussed why a lot of profitable and demo not live. It's because you don't freak out when you lose a trade in demo, but you do when you lose one in live, right? You're not worried about funding. You're not worried about the rent money, things like that. If you're in profitable in demo, you should be profitable in live on futures, okay? Same doesn't go for trading like options like Nadex and stuff like that. But for futures, you should be profitable. I mean, yeah, there could be, you know, little tick variances here and there from slippage and all that. But you should be if you're trading the same way. So what changed is the reality of money came to mind and you probably over leveraged your account. Or you at least didn't recognize the leveraging of your account that you're about to do. And what I teach you in that course, again, that's apexinvesting.com forward slash mind mastery, is I teach you about being aware of the emotions and fighting fire with fire and how to use that emotion to fight that fire so that way it doesn't control you and help you make, cause you to make bad decisions. Okay? So if you're going to trade with a small account or a large account, really, obviously that course would help you a lot. So if you're hesitating on entries, it's because you're afraid to lose. Everybody agree with that? But how many times do you hesitate and it wins? And my guess, if you're doing this system, quite often. Is that a true statement? I mean, I'm making that pretty publicly here. Are there a lot of times that you hesitate on a trade and the trade actually won? Very true, very true, often, absolutely, yes, I'm totally guilty, that's absolutely true, yes, 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 true, for sure, yes. Okay, so you're going to have to get over it and place the order despite the fear. You know, courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to press forward despite it, right? And either you're going to have to trade the system or not, because if you're going to start cherry picking it, you're just going to mess it up. And then you're going to second guess it. When you missed it, you're going to be mad and you're going to take the next one, which probably isn't even a good trade. And you're going to take, and it's going to turn into a loser. And then you're going to be pissed. And then you're going to miss out on the next three winners. And then, well, you could have already been done for your day, but now you've totally jacked it up because you took the one trade you shouldn't have and you missed out on several of them that you should have. You're just going to have to take them. And hopefully the webinar Thursday will help you more with that on the enhanced trades. What about closing out too early? I'm up five ticks. Oh my gosh, I got to get out. I'm down three. I better get out because I don't want to lose 20. Anybody have that issue? Ron's like, quit talking about me. Never. Oh, you're a liar. <laughs> it's like 99% of people have this problem. The other 1% lie about it. <laughs> not cool to share all my faults so you're going to have to let a trade play itself out there is reasons to close a trade early but it is not your P&L Your profit or loss is not the reason you close a trade. It has to be something on the chart that would tell you to close a trade. You know, like maybe it turns, it, it goes up and it comes down, it goes up and it comes down. You're in chop, you're in like quill chop where it's like long, short, long, short, long, short. That could be a reason. Does that make sense? You got in and a cluster popped up at the last second. You got in and the act, the trapped X went away at the last second. That could be a good reason to close a trade.
all right being up 25 bucks or down 45 bucks is not a good reason to close a trade you just got to be patient I, it's funny i had my my son came over he made 25 bucks tonight trading and um he's seven years old he's sitting back we're looking at xboxes and all that and uh I'm like, Judah, okay, do you know what you're being paid to do? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, do you know what you're being paid to do? And he's like, what? I'm like, you are being paid to be patient. Like, literally, you're being paid to be patient. And I'm like, traders who are patient, make money. Traders who are not, lose money. Once he made his 25 bucks, he's like, I'm done, I'm out. Then he ran out to Cub Scouts. <laughs> so, but you just got to be patient. And sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it's not. But you got to be okay with that. But paid to be patient is literally like should be a mantra in your head. Say that when you want to close them early. You know, another reason for closing early is maybe you're coming right up on a magnet level and that you're only like seven or eight ticks in and it's just hesitating, hesitating, hesitating. Or the DOM, you see 150 orders pop right in front of you where your take profit's going to be. Yeah, okay, that's a good reason on the chart to close a trade. But not just because you're up or you're down. So, some top mistakes. Who wants to hear about some of the top mistakes new traders make? So you don't make them. Who would like to know? I got like three pages of these things. You ready? All right. So one is have a long-term goal. Okay. You need to know why you got into trading. A lot of y'all signed up just because of the simple idea of, well, I want to make money. That's good, but don't take you deep enough. Why are you doing this? And you need to write it down. You need to write down, where do I want to be in one year? Where do I want to be in six months? Where do I want to be in three months? Where do I want to be in one month? And where do I want to be at the end of this week? So week, month, three months, six months, and one year. Write it down down if you've not written that down one week and update it weekly one month three months six months and one year you're already making one of the top mistakes if you've not written it down one week one month three months six months and one year you're already making one of the top mistakes in trading some of those are going to be life goals like quit my six-figure job some of those are going to be have my account funded. Some of those are going to be go an entire week without have taking any possibility trades and only taking probability trades. Okay, some of that's going to be pay for the event, the live event that we have in March. All right, there could be a whole variety in there. And but the further out it goes the deeper the goal should get as to why it's important to you to accomplish that. Like, don't just go because I want to quit my job. Why? Because I hate my boss, you know? Or just because I don't get enough time with my family. Or I hate working nights. Or I want to build a trade during the day when it's easy. You know, and I want to spend more time with my family. Or, you know, whatever it is that's important to you. But you got to write it down. And I told you a lot of y'all this, and I guarantee you at least half of you haven't done it yet. So you got to write down your goals or they will never become realities. You need to have a good look at your risk management plan. So hopefully some of y'all taken a note and said that I'm going to write down my one week, one month, three months, six month, and 12 month goals and I'm going to dig. You got to have a good risk management plan. Okay. Which either means you need to be aware of the high risk you're taking or you need to lower your tick size. One of the two. 
You can't just walk into it thinking, my, my risk management plan is to not lose a trade. <laughs> Anybody have that risk management plan? I'm going to get this down until I don't lose any trades. And that's my plan. So some of y'all are laughing. <laughs> you know it's your plan. Yeah, be realistic. But have a risk management plan. There you go, Ronald. I hear you on that. I got a Dodge. What is mine? It's a Ram 3500 Longhorn Edition. He says he wants a Laramie Longhorn. It's basically the big one. It's basically the same thing. Yep. <laughs> but have a good risk management plan. Okay? Like, be aware of it. Trade with risk capital, not the mortgage money. If losing a trade makes you wonder how you're going to pay your bills, you're going to take a lot of losing trades. It's like the market can smell it. Okay? No one to stop trading for the day, up or down. What's our rule? We have a rule. What is it called? 6-3. <coughs> it takes a lot to be down six. I don't know if I've had anybody actually say they're down six trades in a day in the last two months. But that's a net six losing trades, right? But if you're up three winners, if you're up three average winners of 10 ticks, be done. So that'd be if you're up 30 ticks, be done. If you're down 60 ticks, be done. And it could definitely happen. Has it happened? I'm just curious. Has it happened to anybody in here that has traded the rules over the last two and a half months that we've been doing the sniper program? Has anybody hit a down net six trading the rules? I'm just curious to see if anybody says yes or not. Somebody said on Christmas. <laughs> what were you doing trading on Christmas? I've been down net three, been, never been down net six. No, 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 never, 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 no, 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 never, no, never. So nobody's been down six except for one person who may have been if they traded the rules, which you don't trade and after Christmas because that will eat you alive which we said don't do so that actually I guess technically would be under breaking a rule since we said not to do it no you have to be down 60 ticks to actually be down net 6 trades and Brex like yep I broke the rules Putting trades in wrong, I've been down six, so not following the rules. Yeah, 120, you're right. <laughs> I got no shame. So you may not always get your net three by the time you're, you know, start and stop trading. But I think most of the time, most of y'all have got your net three if you've been following the rules. So, so far, no one has told me, and we have about 200 people on this webinar tonight. No one has said that following the rules, the actual rules, so they may have made mistakes, but following the actual rules that they've actually been down six net trades. That's the point of the 6-3 rule. It's very hard to be down six. Ron's like, I would have jumped out of my window, my basement window, but at least it'd be a short jump. All right. So, no one to stop. What about, okay, let's go back to that. What about when you're up three? How many of y'all are doing a good job stopping when you're up three? Because that fourth trade is so tempting. Especially when you get three in a row. So 
So some say I go on for more. Some say that's my problem. I stop. I stop. When I'm up one, that would be stopping too soon. I'm up three and I disconnect my mouse. That's probably that some wisdom there. Yeah, and you can keep going in sim. I'm, not, I'm talking about like if you trade live. Now, if you're if you're doing pure sim, you need to make a mental note that at this point I have to stop. You can go ahead and I'll practice going forward, but I'm treating the first three like they're live. So yeah, you can go on to sim to practice, but I'm talking about risking your capital. I mean, quarter million dollars a year is the plan we show you. If you learn to just take three trades a day and stop. If you download the new one, Stephanie, it should say that. If not, then post a note inside the forum for Shane and Gabe to check out. So if y'all will learn, I mean, everybody in here just said, as long as I follow the rules, I've never hit down six. Now, here's a question. How many of y'all been up three and ended up not up net three because you kept trading? There's one honest. Oh, there's a few more. <laughs> People hiding under the blanket. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> So that's ego taking over. That's greed taking over. Fear taking over. Like the money's coming. Just let it come three at a time. So just learn to stop. Okay? That's top mistakes that traders make. It's not stopping. Went up or down for the day. Okay? Like you just you gotta make yourself just stop. Like if you gotta pull your mouse outside of the if you got to pull the plug on the mouse or pull out the batteries or whatever, you shouldn't be using one with batteries anyway. But if, you, if you're, just turn off your mouse, okay? Yeah, at the end of the day, the money's still there. And wouldn't it be a beautiful thing when 150 bucks turns into 1,000 bucks you know, a day in three trades? You don't have to trade more to make more. You just have to trade consistently to make more. I remember a guy coming up to me and going, can you teach me how to make a million dollars? I'm like, well, first let's teach you how to make fifty dollars a day. It's like if you can make fifty dollars a day, we can help. You can make a million dollars in a year. But if you can't make fifty bucks a day, a million dollars never is going to happen, right? If you can't make one fifty a day. You're never going to make a million. You're never going to make quarter million. So just learn to have the discipline. And here's the thing: why is it so important that you have that discipline and stop now when you want your account to get so big so quick? Because you're going to only be worse when you have more money and you have seven or eight contracts on. You got to learn to stop when you're up three then. Well, I will when I'm up then because I have a lot of money. Oh, crap. You will not. You will keep going and you will blow that account in a week. So trade your plan, stick to the system. Take emotions out of it. And I don't mean be absent of emotion. Okay? I mean be aware of the emotion so they're out of control. Like they're... That sounds weird. But you don't want them out of control. You want them out of control of you. So you got to be aware of your emotions and head them face on, which is what I teach you in Mind Masteries. I teach you how to use your emotions to give you power over them in trading. You could definitely go above seven contracts, Richard. I just show you how to basically get to six figures in one year and a quarter million the next year just doing seven because I don't want to make the numbers infinite. I'm trying to keep it realistic. So trade it demo to you have it down and profitable, learn one system or strategy. Who in here has went off and found some other course on some other website from some other email and checked it out since they've started Sniper? Just asking. 
anybody guilty? I mean, come on. We get emails every day. Got a couple. I got one guy that was in a room the same day we were rocking it, and they, like, hit their stop loss. <laughs> Rich was like, I came from those people. Guilty. It's like living in a, it's like leaving a cult. I can't leave. So be careful and don't. And I'm not. I'm not trying to say you got to do it apex, but we've y'all seen how well it works. You know, don't get distracted by every other little system of bell and whistle. Sometimes some trader will come in, or even in our own room, we'll have some guy coming. Oh, I'm up a thousand, three thousand dollars today, and he's not even doing apex. Well, that's great, but can you duplicate it? Can I know how to do it? Well, no, I'm not going to share my settings with you, or I'm using moving averages. And yeah, how many people have duplicated what you're doing? Because we have thousands, right? So stay focused. Some of y'all like to jump in without the training. You just want to make the money. Or you want to jump into live without practicing demo, because, well, it's, if it ain't real, it don't matter. If I don't got skin in the game, it's not real. That's like telling a pro NFL or NBA player, if they don't practice, like practice doesn't matter because it doesn't matter unless they're in a real game. If I ain't playing in the game, it don't matter, so I don't need to practice. How far do you think they're going to make it in the NBA or NFL or whatever if they're not practicing? I mean, really, how far do you think they're going to make it? Right. How far do you think you're going to make it in trading if you're not willing to practice? Because you think there's no skin in the game unless I can lose money. That's just... I'm sorry, that's just stupid. All right. Lack of education. Not watching the videos. Probably my biggest pet peeve. And I don't have a lot of them. But that is one of them. <laughs> Watch the... I, I have spent an insane... Amount of hours, which those that have been here for years on end, I mean, we've been going since 2008. No, I have spent an insane amount of hours making that education and improving that education over and over and over again. So that way you can learn something in 20 minutes or an hour. Take the time and go through the videos and ask the questions, okay? Poor risk management, we've talked about that. Trading live too soon, we talked about that. Not following the system, we've talked about that. Monitoring too many instruments. The only time I condone monitoring more instruments is when the markets are deathly slow. And then you can look at other things like gold and oil and, you know, New Zealand dollar and pound and stuff like that. If it's fast, focus on one. Big mistake. Biggest mistake I see. No social interaction. I can tell you right now, the people who are not in a mentor room, if they don't get one within the next 30 days, won't be trading in, at least won't be trading with us in the next 90, and probably won't be trading at all in the next year. Period. If you're not in the mentor rooms, in the, engaged in the forum, engaged in the elite room, if you're not engaging, you're not going to make it because you are assuming you understand everything. And you don't. Um, another piece I want to put on top of that is we all tend to think we are better than we are. Like that example where I made 10 grand in one day, but I lost 10 grand in the next. Okay. Like that's a real story. I'm telling it to you because I thought I was better than I was. We all think we're better than we are. Or at least at some point. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I could miss my wife, but I am. I mean, you always got to have jokes. <laughs> um, but be in the room. It keeps you humble. And humble, by the way, is not a the best definition. One of my mentors taught me. He was a rabbi and a messianic rabbi and just a mentor of mine, just a, like a dad figure. And he taught me the definition of humble means an honest estimation of oneself. Not an overestimation, not an underestimation, but an honest estimation. 
And the best way you're going to have an honest estimation of yourself is by being interactive in the rooms. Because you'll know where you're right, where you're wrong, and you won't be running on assumptions. And you will improve. And if you don't think you need to be in the rooms, then you're prideful and you're going to fail. Okay? I want you to be successful. So I'm just being very, very candid with you. Don't be jumping between systems. We covered that. Don't be inconsistent. Don't be trading on your gut. Not trading on what the chart's telling you, but what, well, I think I see this. You know, somebody asked me tonight, like, hey, do you see this? Do you think the market's going to make it to here? I'm like, you know what? I honestly do think it is. But I found opinions are really, really, really expensive. And so I'm going to let the chart tell me that. And the chart is going to help me. You know, Marion, quoting Confucius, he who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. He who does not ask a question remains a fool for life. So a very good quote. Thinking you know it all. So therefore you don't need to improve. I've had one of those in the last month. Thought I knew everything. So I'm like, well then go do it. <laughs> Why are you here? Um, trying to find that one trade that is 100% profitable. Is anybody guilty of that one? If I can just master this and combine it with a star, and if there's three traps, then those will be the winners every time. Remember, you are, and I go into this in the Mind Mastery, you are trading probabilities, or you should be. What does a probability mean by definition? It means that percentage will lose. So you should expect a percentage. Of, it doesn't mean you lost. The trade lost. It's okay. So, you're, I'm just telling you right now, you can believe me or not believe me, but you're not going to find the 100% trade. I, I mean, this is somebody who does arbitrage, okay? Arbitrage is what's called risk-free trading, where I find inefficiencies in the market and I have programs that take advantage of it, okay? Which means, like, the price should be at 50 and it's at 60. So, I buy it at 50 and I sell it at 60. And even arbitrage has risk. Okay? There is no such thing. And I mean, I'm talking about like a computer with 128 processors running on servers parked across from the exchange. Lightning. Math. Okay? Years of programming. Still, it's not 100% trades. Should be. But there's a reality, okay? And sometimes it makes a lot. And sometimes it doesn't make squat, okay? And sometimes it, I've, I've been hammered by it too, okay? There's nothing that's going to make 100%. You just got to learn to get your net three and be okay with that. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll start making money. Not reading the market condition, not paying attention. You know, I had a trader today, took an Xbox trade. I, I took this trade and it lost. I'm like, you're trading against the trend. It's an naked Xbox. Why'd you take it? Uh, how do I tell if the trend? Look at DR. DR's red, you're in a downtrend. DR's green, you're in an uptrend. If it's going back and forth, you're in a range. You know? Uh, but you got to read market conditions. You got to know if it's really fast or really slow or a holiday. Or zero volume, like Monday afternoon, even though there were a couple good trades. Understanding the ABCs and one, two, threes. Like, here's the rules. Now let's understand the market. Uh, looking for just rules, but not trying to understand it. That's why I did the webinars last week. Did y'all like those? Where I went and I helped you understand the charts? I should know what was behind it? Were you actually learning? So, not willing to take a loss. Ooh, that can get really expensive. I'm going to keep moving that stop and moving that stop and moving that stop. 
greed, not taking profits, because I want to take, I want more money, so I'm just going to keep moving up my take profit, and then it turns into a loss. Rewarding bad behavior. You do something you shouldn't do, and it works, and so you decide to keep doing it until it blows your entire system out of the water, and you can't understand why you're losing. <coughs> so, those are some top mistakes. Did y'all learn a couple things there that might help you avoid some of those? Can y'all take some of that to heart so you don't repeat it? Because here gets one thing, but deciding to actually listen to it is another. So what do y'all, some of y'all need to do? You need to fund your live account if you haven't done so already. Most traders, I get this a question a lot, do I choose Dorman or Phillips? Dorman seems to be easier and most traders choose Dorman. Okay, I'm just letting you know, from what I've heard, most people like Dorman. I hear more complaints of people trying to fill out Phillips. Okay? You need to lease or purchase a live key. And you need to update that key in NinjaTrader under like tools or help or whatever. You can update your key. Put in your new live login credentials. Once you're ready to trade live. The free one will not let you use the DOM. Will not let you use the ATM. Would y'all say the ATM is pretty important in executing sniper trades? Yeah, essential. So two twenty five a quarter, it's like eighty bucks a month. Okay. So do that, make some money, let it pay for itself, and then buy the thing. I own a multi broker like lifetime license. So I don't have the fee anymore. Uh, if you have questions about that, you can ask us or ask platform sales at Ninja. Reminder, if you're using mini account, one trade a day, ten ticks will pay all your expenses and leave five hundred bucks a month in your pocket. Okay? That's your data feeds, your tools, your internet, your ninja license, all that. So again, when you switch to live, trade the same you did in demo. Be prepared for the mental challenge of the reality of either you're going to be risking a little more, but you got to be willing to follow the 6-3 rules, or lower your risk amount by lowering your tick size. Follow the rules. Stop when you're up 6. Stop when you're down 3. Okay? Track your trading on the 90-day challenge. And then focus. Focus only on setup number two. And I'm going to have you focus only on the enhanced TX trades, which we're going to be training on Thursday to really get you laser focused during this transition because so many of y'all are moving down this path now. Exactly. If you're up three, stop. If you're down six, stop. Be in the room every morning if you can. If you can't, be in there at night and start chatting away and calling out trades with other traders. Be active in your mentor group. Please be active in your mentor group. It is essential to your success. Ask questions with marked up charts. Use Jing. The link right above the Elite Room on the Sniper page has a link, a video on how to use it. When you log into the Elite Room, the first link you see on there is actually how to use Jing. Use that and learn to mark up your charts and put those charts inside your 90-day challenge sheet. And whenever somebody replies back with a marked up chart, put the reply back if they do. Okay? And yeah, you can use a free ninja account to learn Sniper, definitely. So the 6-3 rule again is once you're up a net 3 trades, you stop. Or if we're down net 6 trades, you stop. It's very hard to be down net 6 with Sniper. It's not too hard to be up net 3 with Sniper. So again, master the Enhanced TX, be on the webinar, go to section 2 of the site, okay, to sign up for the webinar, or follow us on Facebook. I'll be posting it up there so everybody can watch. Uh, y'all, we're pretty good about posting it on Facebook and then, you know, everywhere. Uh, but again, just once you go to the bootcamp page, you go to Sniper and it's free to sign up for that. Okay. And then right here under section two. Some of y'all, oh, by the way, are on the free 30 day trial. It's about to expire. Sign up for your $1 for your next 30 days. Okay. We have that promotion going for you right now. So take advantage of that. It's under the account tab where you can sign up. Okay. Um, let me answer a few quick questions. What good is the fund accumulating in FXC? I don't know what you mean by that, Walter. I'm going to defer that one to the help desk. Okay. Trying to stay on topic. Don't you say... Yeah, you can say you can use a free Ninja account with free data and free access to all Sniper. Yes. Just go to forward slash bootcamp, sign up, and you're all set. 
We walk you through it all. But yeah, Walter, I'll be happy to help you on direct questions. I just, that needs to be off the webinar. If it's related to what we're going over, then I'm all about it. But, and I'll, I'll answer, you know I will answer every single question you have. Okay, so I'm going to do a real quick chart review because we went late again. <laughs> but was this good for y'all? I mean, did y'all pick up some good stuff that you think will actually help you? Was it worth your time? So even to those who have had funded trades, this is a good reminder. All right, so let's just, we'll just scroll back to last night. Okay. So last night, markets opened up. They were sort of slow. Markets were obviously trending down, as you can see visually. DR is turning red. We get an Xbox short. This is not a enhanced Xbox, but it went on down. It grabbed 10 ticks. Market moved on down. We got a enhanced Xbox trade right here at 831. And an enhanced Xbox is, has a red or green Xbox at the top or bottom after a reversal bar. So, like, the bar had to go up, and this has to be a reversal bar. It has to be on a reversal bar, meaning the bar before the Xbox went in the other direction. It has a blue trapped order inside of it. Help you see that blue inside of it right there. And it had a paw print on it, and it, it did it within two ticks of another paw print, existing paw print, so therefore we can go short, we grab 10 ticks. All right, we got a, another Xbox right here coming off double clusters in the direction of the trend. That one had went down 10 ticks. We have another Xbox, uh, which is a enhanced Xbox with trapped orders with the paw laying within two ticks of a mini magnet. And that one grabbed 10 ticks. So, I mean, there was quite a few trades right there. This Xbox right here went against the trend, so we wouldn't take it. Trend, just looking at DR to determine trend. So real simple way to determine trend. And by that time, you should have been done with your three trades for the day. <laughs> okay? Um, for the night, if you traded last night. But if we kept going, let's see, we got that short. Then we got this long right here, which was an enhanced Xbox. It was a, tra a green box with trapped orders, the blue things inside, with the paw sitting right on top of a paw. Would have made you sweat a little bit, but went on up long. And again, you can go counter trend on enhanced Xboxes. And so that trade would have been profitable. So we all say we got the three. All right, so we can keep going, but I mean, there's another Xbox, went 10 ticks. Now we're in range bound. So now we can take shorts, went 10 ticks, went 10 ticks, win, 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 win. Okay, let's run over to the morning. I guess there's a, um, it's not enhanced, but there's an Xbox right there during the Euro session short off the top of the range keep on going make sure I'm not missing one all right now we're getting to the beginning of the day all right and then we don't trade five minutes before the okay some rules to remember. We don't trade five minutes before the open. We don't trade five minutes after the open. We don't trade five minutes before news. We don't trade five minutes after news. We're in earnings season right now, so just a quick reminder for you. Don't trade five minutes before four o'clock because a lot of earnings come out at four o'clock, okay, or 1600. So stop trading at 355. It's just not worth it. Too many little things come out to pop you. 
Let's see here. We're going down. This is not an enhanced trade. Then he goes up to 935. Oh, we took that trade. Did we take, didn't we take that trade? We went like to 10 picks because I know that's profitable. 64, 65, 66. I think it was profitable to the tick. We did take that trade because I called it like right at 935 open. Few people got it. Um, but the entry was actually right on the 935 because the bar didn't close till 935.11. So this bar opened at 935.12. So we actually took that trade. We called that trade live in the room. It was profitable. Um, we don't call every single trade. So obviously it's on there for many, many reasons. And we didn't call, I don't think we called this one. I don't know if we called it or not. I don't think we did. 57, 56, 55. Sorry, my brain's slow. 55, yeah, that would not have made it. We did not call it. It was not an enhanced Xbox and it was going into a mini magnet and a paw, which is why we didn't call it. Um, moving on forward. Let's see here. We got a trapped Xbox with a mini magnet on top of a ZOI on top of a mini magnet. We sort of call that like a burger. Um, and we called that trade. It was a slippery trade, but it made its way on up. And then, let's see here, and it was profitable. We called this one short, made its way down. I don't think Lori was around for that one, but basically it was below settlement, and the target was right at the magnet. I traded a couple different accounts, so this is just one of my accounts. Then my computer wasn't working for me, so I called nothing for a minute. So you can see by my... Stuff. Uh, let's see. And then just obviously we got our three by that time. But uh, here's another Xbox short going with the trend. It grabs 10 ticks. That'd be counter trend, so you don't take it. That one would be short without any obstruction. 97, 75, so 91, 71, 70, 25. That went down to 71, so that actually went down to where it needed to go. Take profit. Going up, this trade would be counter trend, so we would not take that trade. Let's see. But yeah, we got our three. And then some. So. It's not my main account, but I have a few trades in there. And, you know, I don't call every single trade I take, but I try to call a few solid trades for y'all. But that's just the morning, okay? Do y'all like that? I mean, that's showing last night, that's showing this morning. It's showing just going for three. So, um... Any questions real quick, and then I'm going to wrap it up because we got in pretty deep. But I think we'll have more questions more when we come to next week when we do the enhanced. Took some of those. We had a lot of people get three and three this morning. So it's that another trade to take a profit. But uh, awesome. Okay. Well, I am going. Where do you extend it? Um, Apexinvesting.com forward slash sniper. Or if you can't find it, you can always ask inside the um, help desk. Okay? But make sure you do go ahead and extend your um, trial. If you haven't done so already, sign up. If you're having problems, if you need help with Ninja setting anything up, if you need help with your account, you don't know what's going on, and you just want another trader to talk talk to, let me know. Okay? Like, you can call me after, like, noon. Okay? You can submit help desk tickets. You know, you can hop on the online chat, like, but don't just hang out with your questions and not get them answered. You can use the forum. You can use a Facebook group. I will help you. 
If you're confused about a term, let me know. I will help you. Okay? So I want you to be successful. You just got to want it just as bad and come and get the answers. Okay? I will see y'all tomorrow morning in the room. Thank you so much for taking this much time to spend with me and trusting me. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you. And I look forward to seeing y'all in the morning. Y'all have a good night.